Hello and welcome to another episode of Menace to Sobriety. Thanks for joining us again. A huge shout out to all the audio listeners out there. The numbers are going crazy on the audio. Up to 20k a week. 20,000 of you wrong ones out there, just like me, uh, tuning in, uh, which is wicked. The YouTube video is doing great. The comments are all coming in. I've been a bit manic this last week or so, so um, apologies if I haven't been getting back to comments, but... As soon as things quieten down, I like to get on that computer and reply to you. So always interact with us. Uh, And yeah, the journey continues on the podcast. Always searching and looking for interesting people uh, to get on. And uh, our next guest is coming from a little bit of a different angle to our normal guest, which is refreshing. Um, Bit of a different perspective on things. Uh, I'm going to introduce Laurie Haynes. Hello. How you doing, Dan? Nice to meet you, mate. Thank you so much for uh, having me down here today. I'm super excited to come on here. Yeah, that's a train. (laughs) Sorry, mate. (laughs) Does that mean we've got to do something? <laughs> um, yeah, man. So, yeah, I've been following a little bit of your journey as well online and I'm in some of your groups. And do you know what? I think it's a big, like, what you're doing is massive. Yeah. And it really is a place that's deep in my heart as well. Brilliant. So yeah. that's why I wanted to reach out and see if we could sort of mm. join forces. Well, we yeah, I was, because uh, what happens is, like, with like my team and your team, we sort of spoke and mm. then my PA goes, oh, this would, this would be a great guest. Yeah. And I, like, quickly had a, I quickly had a look and I was like, right, the app looks fantastic, which we'll chat yeah. about. Um, you're going to be the ambassador. We were just briefly talking about this before. You're going to be the ambassador of, uh, was it Nakoa? Nakoa, yeah, Nakoa. That's a, it's a charity that was established um, to help children that are victims of alcoholism. Now, this this was what this is the angle that I thought to myself, well, because normally, like I said to you when we were coming in, I was mm. saying, like, normally the, the sort of premise of the podcast is we go into someone's story, yep. um, how they overcome it, and how they become sober, and then they and then there's a lot of nuggets of information they can get back. But from the angle you're coming from is really interesting. As mm. a child of, uh, am I correct in saying the child, yep. child of al- alcoholics, it could really give a perspective to people out there and also a motivation for them to get yeah. sober. People that have got kids. Yeah, 100%. So I'm interested to hear a bit about your story. Why don't you kick us off? Yeah, so um, I won't spend too much time going into it because there's been, it's, it's, it's a big story. Mm. Um, as you can imagine, it's many, many years. Um, but really for me growing up, alcohol played quite a huge part within our household. Now, there's the sort of, You'd have the, the, those people that would say, oh, I have a few few drinks here and there. Yeah. And there's those, that th- doesn't matter how many drinks they have, the outcome could be whatever it could be, right? A few mm. drinks or, or a mass lot of drinks. And uh, alcohol was something that my parents would consume on a daily basis. Oh, really? Um, and I went through, as the years went on, I had many father figures. Mm. Um, and each one of those were drinkers. Right. Um, as I said, some would have few times a week some would be every day Mm. as the years went on um and my mum she would drink um one to two bottles of wine a night now growing up seeing that that's all you know yeah yeah and it's not something as a child you know an undeveloped child you wouldn't sort of go into school and ask that question does your mum drink two no it's just no it's a life yeah it becomes the normality right and it it took until i was a certain age in my 20s that i would go out and party all the time Mm. So, if I was doing some work, I've always been a hard worker, and someone was like, hey, do you want to go down the pub? Yeah, laptop closed, I'm down the pub. Yeah. yeah. And if I didn't get in that night till five, six in the morning, then whatever. Or if I didn't get into the next day, it didn't matter to me, right? Yeah. And that wasn't the normal from what I knew growing up, but that was a way that I learned how to deal with my emotions when things got tricky through my adult life. Yeah. I'd always turn to, to drink or, or to, to drugs occasionally, right? Yeah. And... That's where I spent a lot of money, a lot of time, and there's always that big, huge emotional come down, no yeah. matter no matter how much you're consuming. Yeah. And that's where it really affected my adult life. But growing up, I didn't know that at the time. So I didn't know that I was behind on all of my, I'm gonna call them grades, but let's say in my classroom, I'd always get put on the table of people that needed extra help. Yeah. I'd always struggle in school to learn, mm. to understand, to manage and regulate my own emotions. Mm. So I would walk out of lesson. I would rip my papers up. I'd throw a pen, anything to get kicked out of the the the, the classroom. Yeah. And from a psychological perspective, a child that doesn't want to do something will misbehave. So they get out of it. So they get out of it. And the more you take them out of that scenario, the more you'll regulate them doing that misbehavior. Because they know it works. Exactly that. Yeah. And that's something that I learned quite recently is I'm, I'm, a, I'm a student of psychology at the moment. I'm just going through my undergrad degree. Um, 
and you know you keep continuing to learn so growing up you know it wasn't just about seeing them drink bottles of wine it was about them arguing mm. and fighting each other and it would become sort of a very violent upbringing mm. alongside the alcohol and then sort of thirdly to that I wouldn't ever experience things like do you know that support in hand where if if you need to talk to someone about something you don't feel you can talk to them mm. you don't get do you know like that cuddle at night like yeah. I love you like I give my children the reassurance and everything they need to know that I'm not going nowhere they can talk to me about anything and we're together no matter what yeah, yeah. whereas having multiple father figures you don't know when, if year to year they're going to be going and they're coming back you don't connect yeah you don't have that emotional connection and knowing that your mum would always choose another man over you mm. sort of you know life is built up of hierarchical systems that's fine but not when it comes from a mum especially to, yeah. a, to a son there's supposed to be a bond that can sort of never be unbroken and it was always broken because the wine and the guys would come first yeah um and there was never no one to lean on so you sort of start to learn um yourself how to stay in fight mode you, you you're constantly in fight mode and if you've never been taught or shown, there's no learnt behaviour there. So you don't actually know how to fight, inverted mm. commas. So that's something that I've only learned, you know, coming out of my... I'm not going to say I'm sober, as we established at the beginning of this. I'm, I'm not sober. I mean, I had I have a couple of beers on the weekend. But it might be one beer with my dinner. Yeah. I know, I understand moderation. Yeah. That's the difference. And, you know, um, addictive personalities, I'm now coming off of sugar. Yeah. So I do understand addictions very well, but not to the extreme of drinking every day. Yeah. Because um, I always hold myself accountable and I've always said I'll never want to be like my parents. Yeah. Um, did you ever, just to jump in, did you yeah. ever Did you ever get bad on the drink and drugs? Yeah. So as I said, like a lot of my very good friends are the guys still to date pretty much that throw the uh, spray parties in Marbella or Ibiza. They had all the nights in Dubai, most of the best nights in London on a Tuesday or Thursday. And yeah, we all live together. In when the your same pals place. were them sort of people, it's hard not to party, man. It's hard. And do you know what? I always, I always chased and, and seeked uh, external validation. Mm. So I only worked hard to buy a Rolex and a flash car. So women would look at me and so guys would be like, oh, he's doing well. Because yeah. I always looked for that validation because I never got it as a child. No one ever read me stories. No one ever kissed my head and said, I've got you no matter what. So you seem to be, sorry to interrupt yeah. you. You seem to be like... I know you said you're doing like this psychology degree, yeah. but you seem to be so in tune with what, yeah. what, with why, you know, what happened, you know, what you was lacking. Yeah. To, to, and it's such, it's such important conversation to have it really, because trauma or what you went for rejection or isolation or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. That's what causes addiction in the future, 100%. right? 100%. And you seem to be really, how have you learned what was missing? So I've been through hell. Hell does exist. Oh. Oh, yeah, they are. Let me turn this off, mate. That was hell. <laughs> um, so I've been through hell. Now, not from a religious perspective. Yeah, some would agree it happens, it doesn't happen. But I've been through hell. And I'm talking uh, suicidal right. to the point where I went on Amazon and ordered rope oh and God. said, that's I'm going to do this. Um, and some would say maybe I didn't have the balls to do it. Mm. Some would say I actually, I actually had a good night. And when I got home... And I wasn't sober, but I didn't consume any narcotics. I was like, I don't think I want to kill myself now. I had a good night. And, I, and it was a conversation I had with a few people that were successful people that I didn't even really know them. It was through people and then it was some strangers. And I looked at those guys and thought, there is more to life than just this. And I didn't decide I wanted to kill myself. And, and even touching base on the suicidal things, growing up with the age of around 14, 15, I've sliced my arms um, and I now know it was because I was looking for attention from someone or versus I wanted to hurt myself because I took a lot of self blame mm. for other people's actions. And the hardest thing in that in that zone is like, how do you cut people off that have give you a disservice? Yeah. You know, as in, as in the perspective that I didn't ask to be brought into this world right, right yeah. I, I, someone gave birth to me and 
you gave me a disservice as a child of a person you were supposed to love. Now, I'm not saying it was always terrible, right? You yeah. know, but there were social services out. There was times when the guy that I called dad mm. left. I had his last name and he left. And then I was told, well, he's not your dad. Right, it's so confusing. So why the hell have I got his bloody last name then? Where's he taking my little brother? Well, that is his son. Yeah. But he's not my dad. No, your dad's this guy. Oh. Why would you not tell me this? Like, so as a kid, like the age, it of, it's it's bad, right? You it, can't, you yeah. can't, you can't digest it. And my mother experienced a lot of things from sexual abuse and assault growing up herself. And look, people experience traumas. It could yeah. be from just a divorce all the way to sexual assault and anything in the in the middle, right? Yeah. But people that use traumas as an excuse, it's not something that should be done, right? You either can be a weak person. Mm. Yeah, which is not good. Or you can be a strong person and utilize what's around you and say, Do you know what, that's happened to me, but I'm not going to let that determine where I en end up in life. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't mean weak as in vulnerable, right? Mm. Let's not mistake vulnerability and weakness. Vulnerability is strength. Yeah? yeah, yeah. Showing your emotion, crying, admitting that things are wrong. That's strong right yeah. yes yeah. but weakness is someone that will hold on to a bottle it up and use it as mm. use it as uh validation to not try and change or do something yeah or as right? or, or or use it as a reason to abuse themselves yeah with yeah, drink and yeah. drugs yeah it, 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 exactly that and you know that's just from my perspective because every situation is different right and i am probably the minority of people that have been through a lot that's managed to come out on the other side hence i can talk to people through uh, any kind of journey and I always use my social media platform mm. to actually speak to people and I've stopped someone it was about three months ago I stopped them committing suicide mm. through Instagram Wow! and they mm. wanted to kill themselves and, and I've been there so we exchanged voice notes um, and we talked and I stopped them so that for me is it's not just an achievement but it's I've, I've kept someone on this on this planet right that was going to do something that I was going to do so I sort of can resonate with how they were feeling Yeah, and it all goes back to, you know, the, the, the next man that come into our lives. Um, I put my trust in him. Uh, my mum had another child, so I've got five siblings. Um, one went off to care, but th th this, this brother in particular stayed with us. Um, and his dad, again, would have five, six, seven cans. Uh, the mm. weekends, probably sometimes a bit more. Um, and I didn't know that it was slowly killing himself. Yeah. Um, and when he broke up with my mum, that was really the last straw for him and he dr drunk himself to death and as many times i tried stopping him and helping him it got to the point where if he didn't have alcohol he would go into this i'm talking not just sweating heart palpitations seizures like seizure. he had to have a can of stella next to his bed where i would have a glass of water right yeah um and you know i watched him die in the hospital with my seven-year-old brother um, his, father, his, his father, his father, yeah. which was his dad, right? So I held his hand through his last breaths. That's um, sorry, man. Nah, it's you know what it's, and I cried in the bath that night, um, but I struggle to cry. Mm. I struggle to articulate my emotions, mm. and that's something that is, is is something because I've never been allowed to express them as a child. Yeah. If you cried, I shout you, what's up with you? Oh, yeah. you, you X, Y, and Z. Because yeah. I'm not just saying it was a 90s thing, you know, Maybe, everything's going to change with history and evolution, of course. You know, teachers can't slap you over yeah. Kang no more. Things are a lot different. I, I, I get that and everybody's journey is different. But that's why I struggle to sort of regulate my emotions in a vulnerability perspective. Um, mm. And it all starts starts from, from, from the childhood because those first years are the most important years of anybody's life. And if you are someone that's going to listen to this and you've experienced an upbringing of a similarity or worse, or maybe, you know, something if not as bad, but it's affected you, whether it's anxiety, depression, yeah. like you just need to know that there is more to life that's going to come your way if you allow yourself to acceptance and accept what can happen. Mm. And that's something that I never used to do. I used to hold myself accountable for a lot of things. Yeah. I never used to pass blame because I thought it was normal mm. until it would come out in my own relationships. And that's when I sort of took on board quantitative thinking and I really started to, to, to study and learn the, the, the mind, whether it's uh, cognitive psychology, neuropsychology. I just really wanted to understand when someone says that, why do I feel this and why do I act like that?
That's that that right there. What you're saying at the end. That's where my that's where I am right now. Yep. Okay. That's that. I'm like I I want to know why I behave the way I do. Yep. I want to know why my emotions since since I got sober and since I stopped doing that. That's what this whole podcast and journey has been about. Mm. And I'll tell you something that I'm on at the moment. And you yep. might be able to help with your psychology uh, with the with the. It's by the way. First of all, really really interesting. I think that you're a, you're a key example of someone that has taken like what life has thrown at them. And I loved when you said a minute ago, you know, you may have just come from, you know, it could have been from anything from a divorce because, you know, my, my family went through a tricky divorce. Yep. All the way up to sexual abuse or whatever. Or even you might have just got bullied at school. Do you yep. know what I mean? It, I say just bullied at school, but these things that happen in your childhood, you don't realise it, yep. but they sh they do. They shape your coat, the way you cope with life and how you deal with things in the future. And I think that counselling is, is a great way to find out yep. what, you know, because I didn't know what was up with me or why I behaved the way I did. And it was only when I sat, and I've been doing counselling for years now. And when I sit, and they go, yeah, that's because of that. Well, that's yeah. because of that. Mm. that. And you start going, oh my God. So counselling is a great one for it. But right now I'll give you an example. There's one part of my character that I'm really keen to, and you might be able to help me, that I'm really keen to f change, right? And you could probably hopefully tell me why. It's... I get some days I get so pissed off with criticism, right? Okay. Like trolls. Yeah. I've seen your Instagram, right? Yeah. Like you get you got a very active Instagram. You yeah. must get people going, Oh, shut up. I like, get I get trolled daily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Because yeah. like, yeah. when you're spreading a good a positive message like you do, yeah. your people are like Well, it, it rocks their nervous system and you're showing them you're 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 giving a, a you're sharing knowledge, not going to call it advice. You're sharing knowledge on something that might resonate with them. Yeah. But some of them are egotistic, nihilistic, aggressive people that do not want to learn, do not uh, accept education. Yeah. And their only means of expression is to tell me to go die or you're a piece of shit or yeah. what the f do you know? Or, and, and I don't have the time to explain my journey. Um, you know, there's a lot more than what we've even spoken about right now. And there's a lot of heavy stuff. And, Mm. I don't have my time to explain it to these people, but I do still wish them well. Yeah. Because and that's just not I'm not just saying that because it's well, in the public. Does it eye. affect you? Does it wind you up? Do you know what, Dan? I'll be totally honest with you. There's days where it does affect me because I am human, right? Yeah, yeah. And it, it what I can't comprehend and what what really upsets me deeply, um, and I'm so fortunate and happy and grateful that I haven't come across a troll face to face. Yeah, because you don't know how you I, react I, then. I, I, I really don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know how I conduct myself and I'd be very upset with myself if I should use violence or anything else, right? Yeah. Or, or, or or embarrass myself in a way that I normally wouldn't, right? Yeah. And that's one of my biggest fears that I still deal with all the time because being in the public eye, you know, my fiance is quite a renowned celebrity. Everyone knows sort of of her in the UK especially. Um, Are we allowed he, to mention who that yeah, is? Yeah, Fern McCann, yeah, yeah. 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 And... She's she, great, by the way. She always supports she my stuff. She told me to say hello. Yeah, she, yeah, she she loves your stuff. She I was I've never met her. She I was don't... the one who nudged, I think, uh, our, the PR to say. I don't think I've ever met there. her in person, but okay. strangely enough, she's like, I see a little comment or I like yeah. her. Like, we support yeah. each other. I think she, she follows she, my she, message. Yeah, she as well. does. She's amazing. Yeah. She said that. Um, and what hurts me is when people oh, they, mock they, my she, daughter. Yeah, oh, my four month old daughter. And that's where. It's too much, isn't it? You don't have to explain yourself. It's hard. If you're, if you're like, if you're like, you know, some people would listen to what you said a minute ago and go, "You're like, I hope I'm not violent." See, I get that. Yeah. But other people out there be like, "What are you talking about?" But when you do have people talking about your kids, the it, first thought that goes in your head is a violent one. Yeah, a hundred percent. Now I'm expressing to you open, and honestly, right? Yeah. Anything goes. Podcast. Yeah. I'm going to say it, right? Yeah. But you know, yeah. I don't know how I'd act in that moment. But when, when I get messages like, "Oh, your poor daughter to be born with two parents like you how terrible she should be taken away oh my god and yeah. we're, we're the best parents i do everything for mm. my children i'm sitting there this morning doing uh maths and i'm and i'm writing words with sunday which is my stepdaughter and you know it, it's i do everything i can for my children yeah of and course when someone doesn't actually truly know you you know take it upon themselves to say that yeah it, it, it's hard but you know what i've i've only been the public eye two years now yeah um and you know being with someone like Fern is quite rife press wise yeah. because you're on the day. TV as well though yeah 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 I'm on the TV a lot we've um, we start filming again very very soon hmm. uh, and the last series literally just ended um, 
it's called my family and me with firm McCann. So it is it is all about our family personal. life and it's personal, yeah, but it's hard sometimes. But what trolls. why do you think what like because I've got some people around me and and we'll get back on onto things because I want to find out more about yeah. your story. But I just wanted to touch on this because it sort of triggered something in my mind because I do know some people that don't give a sh yeah right and I've tried to tap into because. I got this fight this week and there's people saying different things and sometimes I'm just like, oh, do you know what? Um, I'm just going to block you. I don't care. Or I'm like, oh man, you're struggling. If For you mm. to say that, I think someone said, someone, someone said to me, uh, what's your diet like? Because you've been doing this training for like a year and you're still a fat C-U-N. Oh. And I was like, but I was having a bad day, right? So yeah. I actually got up and I was like, am I? Like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, am cool. I? And, and then I was like, what are you doing, man? Yeah. Like, who cares? Like, yeah. they're saying it, so I react, right? Yeah. And I'm just like, how do I get, one, why do I care? And two, how, how do I stop caring? It's do you know the thing is, people say don't read it, but that's yeah. impossible. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, I don't read all the DMs, of course. There's, sometimes there's a huge influx, like even just getting my hair cut from the long blonde curls I had last week. You know, I got 4,000. Wow. Like, mental. Because people actually, when they watch a TV show, they watch on social media, they build this relationship with you, which, yeah. is, which is from their perspective and it's a, their virtual reality of who you are. Yeah, they feel like they're part of they it. They feel like they know you, right? Which is great. And I always try and interact back and that's why I do that because I want them to feel like they're a part of us, right? Yeah. But, um, you know, even a lot of messages were some were like, oh, I really liked your long hair. Thank God, I'd say 75% love the short hair. Mm. Otherwise, I might have been in your situation yeah. and, and gone, have I made a mistake with my yeah, hair? Because yeah. we're human. But what I've learned very quickly is how to block it out mm. once that emotion's been triggered. So if I read something now that says you're a piece of shit, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I'll either block them or I'll just unread it. And I don't think about it again. Yeah, so how do you, because I can't do that, because yeah. when something gets to me, but do you know what? Like, I had I had a really bad day on, on a Saturday with loads of stuff that was going on online. Sorry, because it's like no, a counselling right. session yeah. now. <laughs> um, and then Sunday I woke up and my head started going again, and I was like, right, I'm going for my run. Went for my run, and then halfway around my run, I was like, fuck. Yeah. And I was free of it, and then I was like, my day was good again, but it sounds like you've got a technique or a way to kind of instantly switch off it. Do, do, do you know what it is? I always, I, always, I always revert back to gratitude. Okay. Instantly. Because if, if someone was like, oh, you, you do all this training stuff and you're fat, I still get those messages all the time because I train a lot and I, I have peaks and troughs, right? And then I'll look at myself and go, yeah, but look where I am now to where I was. Yeah, I yeah. know where I'm going. Yeah, yeah. So when you're so fixated on the journey of where you're going, you you quickly can release the emotional attachment to words of someone you don't actually know. Yeah, and that's yeah. one thing you've always got to remember is you don't know that person or what they're going through. So to show sympathy towards them can also help, but yeah. also show gratitude towards yourself. Yeah. And realize that that person has no significance to your life. Yeah. It's not your mum. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the reason why I ask this is because uh, twofold, really, because the listeners and the the people watching, they can use it in their own, you know, their boss, their partner, mm. the people they know, people, anyone that's given them negativity. But also, I know that it doesn't matter what it's. It's not particularly what people say. I mean. You know, if someone says that, I think, am I fat? If someone says I'm a shit box or a shit parent, yeah. I think, am I? But really, what gets me is why someone being horrible to me, I can never yeah. get my head around it. I, 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 as I said, I, I can't comprehend yeah. them to do because I've never been that person no, exactly. to just yeah. reach out and say it. I find yeah. it quite strange and peculiar. Yeah. But, but then we've got, we've got, I think what we've got to remember as well is sometimes they just want your attention, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah of course. They, they, want, they, want, they want to see a side of you that's like them. Angry. Because when someone's aiming up and, and people are aiming down, the, the people that want to reach out, we're going to call them trolls, they're aiming down in life 90% of the time. And if they're even if they're successful financially, they're still aiming down because finances is, is, is a minuscule to, to spreading positive energy. So they are aiming down. And when you've got people like us that are aiming up to better ourselves, to help other people mm. and dedicating our time, usually unpaid, to help other people, they can't, they, they can't digest that. They're... Oh, he's in the public eye and he's helping people. And why has he got this? And why is he doing that? Yeah. There is a, probably a lot bigger story behind it. And the easiest way of dealing with things is to, and it's easy to say, try not to let it bother you. For me, mm. fortunately slash unfortunately, I've got a magnitude of resilience yeah. because of what I've been through. Now, yeah. somebody that hasn't been through a lot, mm. great for them, but it's a big, scary, horrible world out there. And that's the reality that people need to understand. Yeah. And, and you, if you've not got the resilience, 
then it is going to hurt. So there, so what you're saying is there's actually value in trauma. 100% value in trauma because traumas mold us and and what one thing we've we've got to 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 understand is they they also mold the perception of your future of what you see, but you can't let it determine where you're going. Yeah. That's 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 the journey that you need to understand when when, when you've been through things. You need to set goals. Goals are a massive thing, right, to help anybody's mental health. Now, I when, when I used to post pictures sitting on Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Roches, and that was what I did, as I said, to seek external validation, to make myself feel, feel better, to put a big middle finger up to those that said I'd never account for nothing. Those guys got me to where I got uh, to a certain place in my life because when I didn't want to do something, I said, no, f*** that because they're going to be watching and I've got to shove it down their throat. So I'm going to go buy a big gold watch. I'm going to buy another Lamborghini. I'm going to make more money because I want to ram it down their throats because they said that I would never amount to anything. That's what got me so far. And then I realized there was resentment within that energy yeah. that, that, that weren't going to get me any further. And when I when I realized that I was needed to do things for myself and not for, to ram it down those guys' throat, my life really changed. And that's when I got into meditation, breath work, amongst many other sort of rituals, mm. which you'd probably refer, refer to those as routines. Mm. And... Um, sorry, I went a bit off track. There. No, that's all right. That's all right. No, um, I, I, feel, I, find, I find your mindset really, really interesting, man. And um, it's like it's crazy because what you're, what, what you're, what you, what you've done has sort of. Did you mean to veer into this, like, because like with your app and stuff like? Yeah. Did you mean to sort of veer into this wellness, like, sort of mental health? sort of area or is it just when you were trying to find why you were the way you were and you discovered things and then you just wanted to share them how did that work so it was a, it was a combination of both dan so I, I i did many years of therapy right um and i was doing three hours a week which financially that's a lot for me, that's a lot of therapy though, it, isn't it? you know I, I i was fortunate i'm so grateful that i could financially you know afford that whereas a lot of people probably can't you know in the, in the majority so you know it is a harder journey for other people i'm not going to say that everybody's journey is the same because it's totally different yes, right course. And I was seeing a hypnotherapist, a psychologist, and a cognitive behavior therapist Jesus, amongst yeah. studying it myself because I come obsessed with neurology and the way neuro, the neuro paths in your mind work and how we can create new neuro paths to create a new future. I then sort of touched base on manifestation, vision boards, sort of, you know, from the cold plunges. And, and it then sort of become apparent that it was a part of my lifestyle, not a chore. Right, and right, right. That's the difference. From You're enjoying it because you have to want to do it. Yeah? yeah. When you go, when you, when you, a thought is an action. That's what people don't understand. People think thoughts are just are, thoughts. Are just thoughts. Now, some are just thoughts, but ultimately there's an action behind it. And when you think about doing something, mm. you can, you can turn that into an action. And if if, if you accept that action, mm. your brain will mitigate the obstacles in getting you to that. To, that, to that place. Yeah, so, right, okay, now we're... <clears throat> is, my, is my mic good, mate? Because I feel a little bit quiet. Yeah, maybe give us a bit more on that. Now we're getting into territory mm. that I'm really interested in. Yeah. This that's this is like magical stuff, right? Yeah. Do you know Robert Heisey? He's from your ends, I think. Robert, Where, Heise Where's my ends? Essex. Is it? Are you Essex? Oh, no, I'm not oh, Essex. Oh, right, okay. I thought you might have meant Essex because Fern's yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I I I'm sorry. I'm originally from Portsmouth. Oh, are you? But do you live in Surrey now? Uh, no, I lived in Surrey for about nine years. Oh, I'm in, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah. So I'm in the Woking area. Yeah. Oh, I was in Weybridge and Walton on Thames yeah. for about oh, nine years. I was in, what, what, how old were you when you were there? We're going um, off now. I went to Salesian school around that way and all of that. So I lived in the place called The Heart, which is above the Nando's in Walton on Thames. Yeah, I know. And Walton, in Waybridge, yeah. I yeah, was yeah. on uh yeah, I was on one of the roads by by the big white yeah, yeah, going yeah. to that place. And um I was there and before that Portsmouth. Yeah, yeah. It's my hometown. Waybridge was where I grew up as well. Ah, okay. But yeah. um no, so uh, I learned a lot from this guy Robert Hiasey about okay. unconscious mind therapy, yep. visualizing things. And, uh, and and all of that jazz. But what I really get interested in was what you were just touching on a minute uh, a minute ago was the, what do you say, neurological pathways, right? Creating new neuro pathways, yeah. Yeah. So for me, I, I really struggled to get sober, right? I tried a yeah. couple of times. Um, my whole life was based around the sesh and everything like that. Um, and now through like sort of forcing myself to do it every morning i'm up at 4 30 mm, i box up that. i box up 5:30 every day yep. apart from sundays uh and on saturdays it, uh, it's a bit later at seven yep. but i mean i'm still up at 4 30 right and i'm raring to go um and it's like i look at it now and i'm like the habit because what was really difficult for me was friday would come mm. right and i'd be like oh my god i need to you know yep. it's this is impossible not to 
get smashed and get off me nut. Yeah. Right. And then, or when I'd be on the train up to London, I'd be like, oh, mate, oh, the yeah. lights, the yeah. darkness. And it's like all these triggers. But now I see that they're like, they're real deep habits, right? Yeah. Uh, like neurological pathways, you yeah. know, roots that, roots that were ingrained into me. And now I don't know how long it took. But now these new, you know, my fitness, my, and also another another one is like trying to notice sort of negative thought patterns, yep. trying to pitch them. But anyway, what I'm, what I guess what I'm asking is, how long did it take me to to create those pathways? What what's the the thinking and theory do, do behind you, that? Do you know what it it can be done? There's there's no actual time frame that I know of, right? There's probably there's, there might be a theory based. Uh, whether that's been done from quantitative research or qualitative research, uh, which one is built on uh, human observations, interviews, human interaction, and and uh, quantitative is done from data and stats. Yeah. So um, I can't say specifically that I know exactly how long it would take. Yeah. But if I go off my own experiences, so I, my coming off of sugar, after day six to eight, I wasn't getting mouthwatering when I looked at it. And I tried two cubes of 95% dark chocolate the other night when we had a movie night at home with all the children. And I didn't enjoy the two cubes and I put the whole bar back. Whereas the old lorry, yeah, it's been two and a half weeks. I've been off sugar now almost. The old lorry would have done the whole bar and more bars in the fridge. And I normally would have ate the bars before I closed the fridge door. Because that's how I used to do it. One bar in the fridge, then walk <laughs> around the kitchen, eat another bar. And that's what I did, right? Yeah. So... I'm more fixated on now um, of changing my my overall um, metabolic age. Right, so right. So currently my metabolic age is around 30 and I'm 32, but it was 16 years old when I was 30. This is two years ago when I was in the, 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 the sort of the peak of my training. I'd wake up. I used to live in central London, Chelsea, pretty much, not central, but almost. And I would run around Hyde Park most mornings, then do a walk around it, then do some work, then go into the gym. I would do boxing. I would train every day with uh, with, with one of my good friends. And my metabolic age was like 16, 17. Wow. Which yeah. is all the fats around your liver, around your kidneys, the way your body regulates itself, your blood flow, you know, your red blood cells, white blood cells, and all, all, all the rest of it. And now I'm 30, so I've got a target to get back there. And that's one of my goals. And... I sort of touched base on goals earlier and why goals are such a big importance in anybody's life because a lot of people I speak to, they goal set so high. Yeah. A lot of the time, mm. you, you, you're going to be in, in, in the majority that don't hit those goals because they're so big. And you should always set smaller goals because they're more achievable and you're less likely to quit and give up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So when you say, I'm never drinking again. Yeah. That's a, that's, a, that's a mammoth task, right? But but for someone who's coming from addiction perspective, you can't drink again because when you drink, it triggers that thing in your mind, which will be, I need a cigarette. I might need I might need some cocaine. Yeah, yeah. yeah I need whatever you need. And because, because the brain always remembers how they go together. So if you have a roast dinner, it comes with gravy predominantly. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and your it, brain will know that yeah. because it's... Yeah, I was the, the same. Behavior. If I drank, if, if I, I, w I would never dr use cocaine on its own. Yeah. It's only if I drank. And if I drank, I smoked. Yeah. Yeah. It all, it all, because that's what your, your your brain remembers. You get people that are sort of passive smokers that will smoke when they have a drink. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people that will only sniff when they have a drink. And, mm. and that's the connection that your brain puts, put, puts mm. together. So in order to create new neuro pathways in a positive way, you need to do something which serves you purpose, right? Now, that could be taking up a new hobby. That could be going through that big pile of paperwork you've got on your desk that you keep avoiding, but subconsciously is keeping you awake at night. Yeah, yeah. Anything that can help help stimulate you from a dopamine perspective, because human beings we're human we're, we're creatures of habit, and we and we just want dopamine most yeah. of the time, right? And then then we lose our oxytocin, our serotonin, and that's where melatonin deficiencies start coming into it, and you can't sleep. When you don't sleep you struggle to stabilize your emotions and you dysregulate your circadian rhythms. What's the circadian rhythm? That is your sleeping patterns. Now, you go speak to a man that hasn't slept for three days. Yeah, he'll rip your head off in the jungle back, 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 you know, back, 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 way back when. Sleep is so important. And people really don't, they can't grasp the, con the concept of sleep because it has to start a little bit back before the sleep. So to get a good sleeping pattern, you need to go to bed within the same sort of time frames, right? Within the same remit. So if you're going to bed at eight o'clock one night, then midnight the next, there's 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 nothing there that, that your body can can understand that that's my pattern. Yeah. And 
the brain needs patterns. It needs cycles. It needs a routine. Yeah, yeah. yeah people that don't go to work normally normally don't have a routine, mm. and that's where they struggle. Right? That's when they just look around and they'll scroll through social media, which gives you quick, quick, instant hits of dopamine. But there's there's no there's no end goal there, right? Because you just you can keep scrolling forever yeah, and ever, yeah. and and you're not learning nothing. You're not getting any value from it. You 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 might even actually be comparing yourself to what you're looking at. Yeah, and that it's can and be it, negative, and yeah. it's not great. And also, you overstimulate yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you if you can if you can drink enough water, get some exercise. Now I'm talking just getting off the sofa and walking around the block or walking your dog. I'm not saying you'll go for 10k runs, right? Yeah, yeah. Just drinking water, just getting some exercise, and encouraging a healthy food nutritional diet. Not all yeah. the time. Do whatever is good for you, right? Moderation is always key. That will help you within your routine to get better sleep. When you get better sleep, your circadian rhythms regulate themselves, and they are what control your mood. Wow! Right, and they are also what can help precancerous cells. They can, they can they, sleep mm. can do a lot. Sleep, mm. hydration, those two things. If you have them, yeah. you're going to really start to help your mental health. So when you people just don't listen, right? No, they don't. I, I, people just I hate to say it, but you know what you just said that that's what will affect your mood, right? Yep. How f-ing powerful is that? Mood yep. is everything. Everything. Mood, mood is energy. Mood, mood is everything, right? Yep. If you're in a bad mood, that's a day. If you're having a day, you're making no progress. You're making no progress. You're making no friends, no money. Exactly. You're, you're not. You're, you're not. You're, the ripple you're, effect. Yeah, you're no good for your kids. You're no good for no one. No. Nope. When I'm, well, I see myself getting into a bad mood, and I can normally try and. I mean, it doesn't. It don't last nowhere near as it used to. I used to go for days, right? Yeah. Because I was, I, was yeah. not, I weren't sleeping right, whatever. But my sleep is so important to me, and I love it. And I'm, uh, I, I'm, I, I, I don't mind admitting it. I'm in bed at eight o'clock, eight thirty. No, that's because you get up at four thirty. Yeah, yeah. The the earlier you get up, the yeah. earlier you will go to bed. Yeah. And that's that's great because there's been some studies, and I'm not going to go too much into it, but the the the, the early risers are more healthy and live longer than the guys that go to bed later. Yeah, yeah. yeah? So getting up early, mm. it's not about putting on social media saying, I'm up before you. I always do it anyway. I do, I do, because I <laughs> yeah. want to influence others. Yeah, and yeah. there's still that little part of me that's that showing you. Yeah, 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 yeah. To yeah. the people that said I would never account to nothing, right? Yeah. So getting up, getting up early, it sets you up for the day. Massively sets you up yeah. for the day because we have these sleep cycles, yeah? And and what people do is they'll wake up at let's say six six thirty seven they go snooze it uh, and they lay there and they'll fall back asleep then it'll go off again they're like now I have got to get up the problem is you need a sufficient these sleep cycles you have to fulfil the I think it's like one hundred and twenty minutes or ninety minutes someone can correct me if I'm wrong but it's something like that and if you wake up thirty five minutes into that sleep cycle you're going to be feeling groggy you're not going to be feeling great. You're going to be feeling like, yeah, foggy. So that's why when that alarm goes off that you've set, get out of bed. Yeah. Instantly. Even if you've just got to sit on the edge of the bed like I normally do when I I struggle in the winter to get up. I only get up at five every day, right? And I sometimes struggle. I'm not going to lie. I've done it for for a long time. I sit on the edge of the bed and it's dark and I'm like, oh. And this little thing creeps in and goes, lay back down. That's what you've always known. Lay back down. You're not going to stick to the gym all the time anyway. Just go back to what you know. And I'm like, no. You know, yeah, yeah. and then what I use in that point, which could this is you know be great for people to grab onto, is I think about my idols, and oh, there's wow. this podcast yeah. that I listen to, um, and what they go into particularly is be the future self that you would be proud of today, yeah, yeah? and and what would your competitor be doing, yeah, and where do you want to be? Those three things, and I go. I want to be this and he would be out of bed already. I'm already five minutes behind him mm. and I just get I, up. I think, I think if you even, I think if you even have that conversation, if you even put that thought into your mind, you, you ain't even going to answer him. You just get up, don't you? You just have to. Yeah, you just go, you fuck. have to. Yeah. That's the, that's the subconscious virtual boot straight yeah. in my backside that yeah. I get when I lay, sometimes I do lay and go, oh, I can't be arsed mm. today. Oh, I'm just going to work from bed and swerve everything. And then it goes, boo, and I'm like, and I'm up. Yeah, yeah. And that, I can't really explain where that comes from. It's buried somewhere deep within me. Yeah. Um, some would call the burning desire to be successful. Some would call it part of my routine and habit. I don't yeah. know, probably a combination of the both. I think I think that, I think like you, we were talking, we started this route of conversation on the neurological pathways. It's mm. like, you know, it's hard at first. Yep. Then that, then, then giving yourself that boot. 
it becomes easier and easier yep. and easier. I mean, don't get me wrong. Every time you wake up in the morning, you have that thought. Yep. But but it gets easier and easier and easier and easier the more you do it. Uh, but it's so important, man. And like a, a year ago, mate, well, uh, maybe, no, a year and a half ago, maybe a little bit longer, because oh, I tried to go sober once, didn't really work, and then went again. And, and this, uh, in between that, I started really noticing, like for the first time ever, like instead of just being whatever yeah. I thought and felt, you know, just being like, oh, today's like this and then tomorrow's like that. Yep. And I'm angry now and da 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 da. For the first time in my life, I started going, oh, can I change that? Or, or, like when it was happening. Yep. Or why Why is so it? Question yourself. Yeah, question. Which is brilliant. My thought process, yeah. Yep. And that, I don't know if that's spiritual or what that is, no. but, but it's like, I just wish for everyone out there that when you have that like epiphany moment where you're just like, you know, my thoughts don't have to be my feeling. I don't. Yep. I don't have to be controlled by my mind. I can yep. change this. Yep. And then you start looking at what you're consuming or what you're looking at or who you are that's making you feel like that. But also, you're looking at once you feel like that, how you can change it. And that's. I think that's the key, right? It's. It's. Look, don't take a kid to a candy store and tell them they can't have sweets. Yeah. <laughs> eliminate. Eliminate the, the the potential that you're going to revert back to old habits by excluding yeah. the things that you shouldn't be doing. So don't go to a bar, yeah, yeah until you're ready. If you're giving up uh, an addiction, yeah, right, yeah. don't put chocolate in your fridge, yeah. Do not buy alcohol. Do not go to a bar. Say no, yeah? yeah. And go and do something that, and just remember the bigger picture, like go home. And that's what I had to do. Um, I was living in Dubai at the time, and my friends were going out all the time, right? They're highly successful people and they they don't really have a want or need for much. They go to the gym every day and they keep their mental health in check, but they love to go out and party, right? Because they can do it in a moderation level. Mm. But I knew that in order for me to change and for me to grow, I couldn't go out. So I'd say no. And they what's up with you? No, I just need to stay in tonight. Like, don't be scared to say no. That's yeah. a big thing. If you're a people pleaser, which oh, is mate, that, I was, yeah. that's a problem because... People pleasing is it's not something you do. It's something that you feel you must. And and that's the very a, a very difficult thing for people that are people pleasers because you don't really ever do anything for you. Yeah. And that's the problem. When you start doing things for yourself, you, you, you will re, your body will reward yourself. The universe gives back. And it's all about, about that energy thing, which we spoke about just a minute ago. Energy is is everything. Energy that you, the frequency that you put out there is is bigger than anything else that you can that you can imagine so if i walked into here today and was like oh dan oh, i didn't want to come here but i thought i can have to yeah yeah come, like, where's the conversation going to go where the energy is like it's yeah. not going to be good and to keep good flowing energy you 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 have to you have to allow yourself to to be the person that you want to be a lot of yeah. people will say i, I want to be this kind of person but if you truly wanted to be that person you would give yourself the opportunity to start that process. Now, yeah. don't look at a guy with a six pack and muscles and a Ferrari and go, oh, I want to be him. I'm giving myself two weeks because you're setting yourself an unrealistic goal. Yeah. Say to yourself, do you know what? I'm just going to start walking every day for the next two, three weeks. Yeah. Then I might go to a run if I want to be. If not, I'll just walk. Yeah. When you walk every day, you, you, you'll be getting that little bit of dopamine that your body seeks and then you'll start maybe, do you know what? I'm going to drink a little bit more water because I'm a bit more thirsty. I'm going to eat a little bit more healthier because I've been doing these walks. Yeah, I get and it, 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 it. And this is about a ritual and this is what my, my platform, Shirah, does. It mm. We've got a rituals feature on there and it just helps hold people accountable by giving you nudges to your phone, to your Apple Watch or whatever you wear. Mm. It, these little accountable nudges and that's why I put that in there which is such a, a big thing a ritual rituals can change your whole life because it's ritual like a routine yeah ritual is a, it, most people refer to it as a, as a routine right but a, but a ritual just gives it a little bit more like personal impact well it, because people that if, if you're religious you, you don't really you, you don't really sort of divert you don't break, you don't break your ritual you, 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 most shouldn't right the majority wouldn't and that's your ritual so a routine it can makes change. It personal. The ritual makes it personal. Exactly you. that, right? A ritual makes it yeah. personal. So for me, I make sure I have to drink at least two to four litres of water a day. That's part of my routine. And I hold myself accountable for that, right? Yeah. I make sure that I do a certain amount of walks every week. Mm. I make sure I, mean, I, I get enough sleep. Those are part of my rituals and it alerts, it pops up. And we've got a lot of other features in this sort of like um, journaling, which we've broken down, which I don't know if you journal or not. It's 
Powerful, yeah. very it's, powerful. It's a weird, uh, I want to find out wh why you even made that app first yeah. and a little bit more about it in a sec, but um, because it always blows my mind when people actually create these things. But uh, for just on journaling quickly, I uh, it's a weird one for me because I only write my in my diary yep. when bad. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So when I go back and read through it, it's like my life's yeah. been a f disaster. Do you know what? You should never read back. You should never journal about a specific problem or, or, or not just a problem let's, let's change it to a, a, a trauma a deep trauma yeah for a probably a good 12 to 18 months because you're probably not over that trauma well no what i mean is i'm thinking about this i'm thinking oh. about that that's what yeah. i'm like i'm like so and so's pissing me off i'm thinking yeah. about that and da, 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 da. My, uh, do you know what i was documenting i didn't realize i was doing it but i was documenting my using a lot i was like i'm yeah. Again and da da da, yep. da 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 I can't stop and I want to da, da da and I do read back and it serves as like a little well, I don't want to go back there but I've always used my diary when I do do it when I need to empty my mind really. yeah so that's why our journaling feature we broke it down into these specific mini features within the feature we've got a cleanse right just for that so you can put pictures titles descriptions and then the brain goes from these black congested shapes video like this and it pops into our brand like these cool fruity looking branding just to show that, that you know it's now digested and it's gone right and you've cleansed you've you've given it you don't have to go back through your cleanse they're saved but we recommend you don't have to go back through them right then we've got the gratitude journal the daily journal and the affirmation journal so there's four within the one right because when you write your gratitudes before bed and in the morning it gives the most powerful impact on your subconscious mind because a lot of people especially nowadays you know if, if i want something to eat deliveroo's there in five minutes if i want to get somewhere there's a taxi there's uber's there in five minutes we're so used to this demand and we want, want, want but when we get it's not enough we want more we want more we want more now i'm not talking about striving for success that's different right there's a similarity there but it's not exactly the same People always want more. They're never happy with what they've got. And that's yeah? a problem. Unless man. it's a big plate of food and you go, oh, I can't eat no more. But you're probably overeating anyway by yeah. that point, right? So Great. people always, they always want more. And that's why when you show gratitude for anything, whether it's the water, whether it's the air in your lungs. Now, if I showed you a picture of someone that's in the hospital that can't even breathe and they're probably going to die soon. And I said, they can't even breathe. Take a deep breath. You're going to feel so grateful for your air right yeah, yeah and yeah. these are the little things in life when you can walk around and go ah, do you know what it was it was raining today coming in these shoes didn't get wet i'm so grateful for the way these are made right i'm so grateful for coming on this podcast and meeting you today i truly am mm. and when you show gratitude for everything you do that that frequency you emit it gets higher and higher and you float at the same frequency as those that are striving for success happy yeah say happy happy is a a destination it's not a, a constant feeling but people that sort of uh, you know happy as such within their lives yeah? yeah so you want to stay at that energy that those people are that and it all comes down from when you journal your gratitudes now gratitudes and i get people that get confused with gratitudes and and gratification yeah because right. what gratification is like a feeling right gratification is something you get from achieving something now what you don't want to do is give in to instant gratification because then there's no further journey on that point, right? So people would go to university for three or four years, do masters, whatever your degree is, let's say three years, and you qualify and you get your hat, you take your pictures and you go home and then the next morning you wake up and go, I don't have to study no more. Ooh, um, what's next? You, 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 you've given in to instant gratification because you should say, I'm so glad I've done that. It's done. Right, I'm now doing this. Yeah. Because the, the, the degree goes on to the next part and then the next yeah. part. And it's part of goal setting, the part of what you want in your future. Yeah, the journey. The journey where a lot of people go. And then that's when they end up going to a supermarket mm. or getting a job in something very commercialized, not what they wanted to do. They just they just give up and go, ah, I've got the degree. That's what my mum wanted or someone wanted. And uh, yeah, now I'm going nowhere. Because cause, cause, cause what you're saying, if I've got this right, because I do find this really interesting, uh, all the gratitude stuff is so humbling. Yeah. And it's important, right? And I, I really do respect this conversation because what you're saying is if you focus too much on the on the feeling of the gratification of yep. what you've achieved, then sometimes that's it for you. That's the, that, that, that's the destination, like exactly. you said. That's it. Yep. But but so to me, the, the only way I can relate to this is definitely, again, through my sobriety, I, 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 
almost lost my family. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Like, you know, the missus and stuff like yep. that. And um, everything that I took for granted. So I was always like, what, like career and am I still relevant? And what's next? And I want a bigger car, bigger yep. house. And I want, I, want a, I want another TV show and I want this. And while the most important stuff to me was here, I was like, whatever, I've got that. Yeah. Whatever, I've yeah. got it. I've got it. I've got it. And then suddenly when I almost didn't have that, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Actually, I don't want anything else. I just want that. Yeah. And now my day-to-day thing is like, oh, I'm so happy. I'm I'm so happy that I have this. Thank you for this. Yeah. Everything else is a bonus. Exactly that. And, and that's what that's what writing your gratitudes do and we and, and we and we really strongly recommend do it in the morning just just five to ten things yeah i'm grateful for my legs that walk and get me around with my breath because there's people there you know that you know amputees yeah. and, and, and people that can't can't do many things you know cardiovascular problems and whatnot so just be grateful for just the things that your human body's got your vision and that will start your day right alongside making your bed to show you know a sense that you can achieve something right always make your bed mm. and that's that's why we broke the journal down um, into those features, and we've just um, also launched um, our latest feature, which has been massive. The feedback, the reviews have been so big. Uh, it's called Sharu, which is the Shara Trusted Guru. Now we've built this using AI, big data. We've we've almost fed uh, about 1.1 million data sheets into it of Q and As, right? Um, and it's something quite quite well, like you can communicate other. you can it. communicate with it and version two is coming i can't say too much about it but it's going to be industry changing um and you can communicate with it so what this is is a tool to help you manage your mental health so let's say you written in there my wife's pissing me off today oh i feel so stressed it will say okay dan tell me what feelings you're feeling about being stressed what has your wife said it's like a therapist it's a therapist it's a companion in your pocket because where it's not an individual therapist that's got an accreditation as such it's not one person it's it's it's, it's, it's a magnitude of data that can help you it's more of a companion in your pocket i, I right? feel i feel like it could just give you a different perspective on a problem 100 percent. that's exactly what it does it will say well dan have you asked how she's feeling right and then you would say but she's pissing me off <laughs> but maybe she's pissed off do you want to ask her how she's feeling no well, that's you being egotistic and arrogant. Oh, and then right, you would yeah. go, oh, maybe, right? yeah. So it's about changing. I love that it's idea, man. about changing man. your mindset, right? And sheru has been a massive hit. So there was a, I spoke to a woman today who who is in one of the local uh, cafes. So I get my coffee and she said, can I just stop you? You're in a rush. I said, not really, but I've got a couple of minutes. She went, um, I've had my panic attacks come back again. I said, really? What's triggered it? Well, I've give up drinking. I said, well, that's a massive achievement. Well done. I said, yeah. Yeah, you know, you, you can accept people when they give you compliments. That's always a great thing to do. And I said, well, what's the, what's the panic attack? She said, I don't know where it come from or how it happened, but I spoke to Sheru. And um, it was, it, I was still having a panic attack. So I needed an instant, something instant. And Sheru said, perhaps you should go and do some breath work and come back. So we've got breath work in our app. We've got meditations in our app. Yeah, we've got knowledge pods. Um, one of our recent um, uh, experts who's an NLP was uh, a guy called Jeff Brazier. He's in the public eye. You might know yeah, him. Yeah, I know Jeff. Yeah, yeah. he's an NLP, yeah. Um, what does that mean, NLP? Uh, Neuro-linguistic practitioner. Oh, wow. And um, so he's done a lot of pods in there talking about grief and bereavement because he's been through it from experiences and yeah. from, a, you know, from an educational perspective, he's got the qualifications. So... Um, so we've got a lot of knowledge pods in there. So she went and done a breath work and she felt better instantly because there's nothing more powerful than the breath, right? Yeah. And you, you, if you follow Iceman Hoff, the guy is not just a, a sellable product. What it, it's what he's doing is, 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 is truly amazing. And it's so, yeah. I think everyone should do it. it. I'm so, so passionate about this that I believe it should be in the national curriculum at school. You should be taught meditation. Yeah, yeah. Breath work. Yeah. Journaling. And how to get enough sleep, to, a, a life, they need a lifestyle uh, academic program. Well, like, like, like a toolkit on how to look after yourself, uh, uh, amongst, how to look after your mental health. Amongst finances, how to manage your finances, which are a big impact on people's mental health nowadays. Huge. They, they come out of school not knowing, you know, what to do. I can add up. you got to pay someone else to sort out your mortar, like all that shit. Exactly. Mate, powerful stuff, man. Really powerful stuff. Yeah. I think, um, um. The, just quickly because I think how are we doing on time my brother 55 alright cool um, I think like just quickly before we before we wrap up yeah. the breath work stuff is yeah. that is that all everything that you're talking about because I haven't really got <laughs> meditation I've always yeah. because I'm, I'm ADHD my yeah. mind's 
yeah. mental, right? I've got minor ADHD in as well, and I, I, I struggled at the start. It took me a long time, and I can only do guided meditations because what? I can't do... I What's can't, the difference? Where you listen to someone talking you, you through it? You listen to someone talking you through it um, because they're sort of then giving you uh, an instruction, which, as most humans... You know, if if you sit within civilization, you can follow an action, yeah, and and and, and you'll do that, right? <laughs> yeah. So it, you know, if I say release re release all the tension around your neck by dropping your shoulders when you're laying down, or you're going to drop them, can't right? help, if yeah, you, yeah, listen. And, yeah. and if I say now, just think about your toes and nothing else in the room, and you wiggle your toes and just think about your toes. Now, yeah. take a big deep breath in, and then hold three, two, one, out. And and when you follow this whole meditation through. You feel a lot different. And what people don't do, which I sort of touched based on earlier, they don't grant themselves the permission to to even grab hold of an opportunity about bettering themselves in life because they won't even sit there for two minutes, let alone a 15, 20 minute meditation. Meditation? I don't do meditation. Well, okay, then you keep carrying on in the life that you're in that you're not happy with. If you're not happy, do a meditation. Try something, man. Yeah. Try something. And breath work is massive because go play football and then hold your breath. Yeah. You're going to pass out on the floor. You need to breathe, right? And when you're in the boxing ring, yeah. when you sit down, back straight, or yeah, sometimes yeah. people have to stand up on the ropes, right? Yeah, because yeah. they need the air to get to their lungs because then, then it can push the, the blood cells around your body. It can give you yeah. energy. And that's how breath work is is, is so important. And th th there is not many things more powerful than the, than the breath, especially in a situation. Because when you have a panic attack, you go, <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> and you panic, right? And your mind, your front cortex starts closing on the front of the brain. So you, you then can't start thinking straight and everything becomes sort of yeah. discombobulated and you forget to breathe properly. Yeah. And that's what causes the problem. But if you stopped and went, <sighs> well, I was just focusing on something and just allow yourself to take them breaths. Allow yourself. Don't think about nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's what I told this woman earlier. I'm so glad you did the breath work and felt great after. And what you got to remember is you're not you're not you're not sick. Yeah. You're not uh, chronically ill. There's it's your mind, um, and you've just got to regulate your breathing by allowing yourself to start breathing. Yeah, man. I think it's a form. I think it's what I take from it as well is that the biggest problem that a lot of us have, especially with anxiety, and panic attacks, and worry, and depression and all of these things is overthinking right yeah. your mind is gone yeah you're f you're you're here and your mind is all the way fucking down there it's about come back to the yeah, present it's moment. coming back and the breathing can do that because yeah. instead of thinking about oh my god what if what what if this happens and this happens and this happens and that's going to yeah. happen and oh my god it's happening and then you feel like it's happening yeah uh and you go <sighs> do you know do, do you know the funny the, the funny thing i'm going to call it right when someone's overthinking and when I speak to people and they're like, I can't stop thinking about this and uh, I'm thinking this, I'm getting paranoid or whatever else. I was like, do you know what? Go jam your hand in the door right now. What? Yeah, Go yeah. Go jam your hand. I'm telling you, you're going to be in the present moment very quickly. Yeah. Right? I'm, don't physically go hurt yourself, but you know what? Whatever you need to do to get yourself back in that present moment mm. is where you're at. So when your mind's thinking of all these crazy delusional thoughts of your misconception of whatever it might be of the world, yeah. right? If you just go and jam your finger, you're not going to think about nothing else but my bloody finger hurts. Yeah. That is the present moment, right? Yeah, yeah. Now you want to try and do it in a way that's not painful. Yeah, yeah. So that's where... The breath work's good. Breath meditation. Work, meditation. Good. Doing the things that's going to bring you to the present yeah. Moment, and, yeah, and 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 having so, so so I love the idea of the app, right? The app, the app to me is very. Is, it, I always say that like I talk it, but the thing is, is what we do is we go through life, right? Yeah. Uh, especially men, especially us men, we go through life. I did for years where we just accept today's a shit day. I feel like shit. that's wound me up. It's still winding me up. Uh, I can't change that. I can't do nothing. Da -da -da. And where my life changes, where I went, whoa, 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 whoa. No, I got some things actually that I can do that's going to yeah. change how I feel. And the apps. Perfect for it's that. It's right? perfect for that. There's a lot of other things in the app um, that you that you can do. I'll put the link in. I'll, what, yeah. What's it called? Where the Shara. Shara. Yeah. It's on both app stores. Um, it's called Shara. And I was just going. Oh, I was going to say something there. I thought it was quite important when you said about um, your 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 mm. mind um, running away with it. It always. That's that's my biggest. That's that 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 
that I had it on Saturday and I was going in all different directions. Okay. And but the good thing is I speak to my wife now yep. about it very much. I mean, I just used to turn like I'd be gone, like glazed at the eyes. Yep. Do you know what I mean? And uh, now 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 I say to her, babe, my head's gone, my head's going. You know, it'd be a really simple thing where she'd be like, Can you do this for me? Can you do that? And I'll be trying to do something and I'm getting confused because I am gone. Yeah. On a thought mission somewhere else. Okay. And what did you do to sort of help yourself out of that situation specifically on Saturday? Well, I had to go for a run. Yeah, I, d- run I, d- yeah, I ended up doing my that, yeah. fastest fucking 10k I've ever done in my life because well, I was. Well, there you go. Yeah, because I was. But really, the truth of it is, what it wasn't the run. It was. It was. It was taking my mind off what I was thinking yep. and then looking at it from a different perspective yep. to sort of sort it out. Yep. And um, what? what uh, uh, yeah, I just, I just like you know, just basically realizing that your mind's playing tricks on you. Do you know? Do you know the most? The, the, one of the biggest tricks that your mind can do, and 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 and. In, in a positive sense, mm. you can trick your mind to do great things. That's one misconception that people have. They think that my mind's tricking me into doing these terrible things and I don't see anything but this tunnel with yeah. no light at the end. But think about the flip side. You can trick your mind into doing great things. So if you if if, if you you know if you're walking with an egg and spoon and it's the, such a traditional thing at schools, um, which they've now changed them to balls to save the eggs, is you, if you said, I'm going to drop this egg, I'm going to drop this egg, and everyone was going, drop it, you're going to drop it. The majority of people, and I'm talking the biggest percentage of people, would drop, drop that it. egg. Yeah, yeah. If you're saying to yourself, I'm not going to drop this I can do it, I can do it. And you've been told for days before that, and the whole crowd's going, you've got this, you can do it. Maybe the peer pressure, you know, it's not the greatest example, but people might drop it because they're scared or, you know, or, yeah, nervous, yeah. or nervous. But, but you'll make likely. it to the end. You're more likely. Right? And that's why it then sort of goes to the same same principle of who you surround yourself with. Yeah, those people will will, will will mold and help guide your future as well. Because yeah. if you try to elevate yourself and start aiming up and be a complete different person, but you're still stuck around these people that are not, yeah, that are going nowhere or or happily happily staying stagnant, mm. you're not gonna be able to elevate yourself half as quick. And that's the difference when people want to make a change and they start changing. I have a lot of people say to me, I have to be loyal to my friends, but how do I make that change and make that break? Yeah, I get that. And, and, and that's quite a difficult thing. And I've had to do that leaving Portsmouth, going to Surrey, leaving different groups of people. I've been kicked out of group chats because I'm no longer, you know, a part of that that yeah, cycle. Yeah. And and it's you get that fear of missing out, the inferior, mm. um, FOMO as they call it, you know, nowadays. Yeah. Um you've you've always just got to believe in why why you wanted to make that change in the first place and don't revert back to old habits. And don't allow other people that are doing less than you to change where you're going because they're doing less than you for a reason. Yeah, that's so if they're not elevating you or bigging you up, yeah. they ain't your people, unfortunately. And never be scared to drop people out, you know? You yeah. wouldn't you wouldn't go out your house with a big thread hanging off your T-shirt. You'd cut it off. And I always use that analogy. Don't be scared to cut people off. Family, friends, siblings, loved ones. If they do not serve a purpose and you've tried helping them, but in turn they don't want help, don't ever be afraid. Don't hold yourself so don't don't hold yourself emotionally to the situation. Allow yourself to cut people off because they will hold you back and you will mentally suffer. That's thank you. I'm gonna finish it up now. Yeah. That's really important. And I think that it goes back to people pleasing, like you're saying. Yeah, we can pleasing. just people please to our own. I even I've I, I see it now, you know. Use me, abuse me, treat me like as long as you like me. Yeah. Do you know what but I mean? It's like how about you please yourself? Yeah, yeah. How about you go please yourself? And I don't mean from a masturbation perspective. <laughs> like, yeah. Go and but, please yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah, do something for you and see how far it gets you, do you know? Yeah. And and that's what a lot of people don't. They do nothing for themselves. Yeah. But they'll do everything for everyone else. Mate, you're like a well of... You just start... You're, you're, you're <laughs> a well of knowledge, man. Thank you. Before I switch us off, yeah. um, tell me a couple of key things. Where can I find the app? Where can yeah. they find you yeah. uh, on your social media? And um, just, yeah, just, just, yeah, just roll so, it out. Uh, we're on both app stores, uh, Google for Android yeah. and Apple iOS under Shara, S-H-O-O-R-A-H, just yeah. Shara. Um, or, you know, you can type in Instagram, Loza Haynes, um, you'll find me there. Um, I've got two pages. I've got a daddy page, which I share all my family stuff on there because yeah. I, I want to aspire to be the best family man I can. Me too. Um, you know, from not, not experiencing it myself growing up. So, um, and yeah, so Shara, you can find it there you can, on both app stores and uh yeah, really. I mean, that's pretty much how to find. I mean, or you can type it in Google, but it's entirely yeah. up to you. Uh, yeah. Probably stick to Instagram. Yeah. All right, mate. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, mate, maybe we'll get a double date going or yes. something. Yes, let's get something that, in. Well, you've got be... obviously a little one. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if I've told anyone on the pod. I put it on my Instagram, but yeah, yeah. I've got a bun. I've got <laughs> I've got a bun in the oven. A bun in the oven. Big so, congratulations. So I've got, got my third shagging. 
Oh, well of my done. Life, of my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least there was a positive outcome this time. Yeah, yeah at least it didn't waste yourself on, on the floor. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Thank you very much. No, you're more than welcome, Dan. Thank, thank you so much. That was really great, man. Listen, guys, thank you. Uh, go check the app out if you want a little toolkit in your pocket. Um, just trying to share, man. And uh, loads of knowledge in there. So thank you very much. Go check them out on Instagram as well. Give them a follow. And leave us a comment. Let us know your thoughts. Always interact with what we're talking about. Sharing's caring. And if you're out there just listening on your walk, on your run or whatever, I love you. Stay tuned. That was Menace to Sobriety. Thank you. Hello! We are going to take the Menace to Sobriety to the live stage and we need a live studio audience to interact with us, to come along, listen, laugh and learn everything about sobriety, mental health, well-being and just come along for a night out with like-minded people. We are going to be going live on the 30th of August, 27th of September, 25th of October and the 29th of November. That's one a month. Get your tickets now. Come down, meet the team and have some fun. Menace to Sobriety live, coming soon. Oh, yes. And don't forget, if you want to come and see me live and meet me, I'm going on tour. The Daniel O'Reilly Out of Character Full UK Tour kicks off in January 2024 and tickets are on sale right now. I'm going to try and get out and meet as many of you as possible. And of course, I'm going to be bringing the laughs all over the UK. There's 23 dates right now and I'm adding more all the time. Hit the link in the bio and get your tickets now and come have some fun. If you're going through a tough time at the moment, please don't suffer in silence. Feel free to pick up the phone and contact any of these helplines. I personally, myself, at one of my darkest points, contacted the Samaritans and it completely changed my outlook and got me out of a really deep, dark place. A problem shared really is a problem halved. So if you don't feel confident talking to those around you, check out any of these organizations and give them a call. This is my Facebook group, just simply search on Facebook, Men and Their Emotions. It's for men only, uh, but once you're in there, you can talk anonymously about your problems and help others and just feel a little bit of community. So come join the conversation, Men and Their Emotions, on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Menace of sobriety. Just a menace. Just, just a menace. Just a menace. Menace of sobriety. Just a menace. Just, just a menace. Menace of sobriety. Just a menace, 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 just a menace